Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord It's such a blessing to be here today to share the Feast of Divine Mercy with you. And I want to thank Father Halfway, Father David, Father Nicholas, and Father Noah for welcoming me back here. I also would like to thank my family and friends who are here, online who have passed on, who have prayed, sacrificed, and supported me. Friends, as I was praying with the image of divine mercy, as you see right next to me right now, I asked myself if we are living divine mercy in our lives by renewing the face of the earth, by being instruments of Christ's mercy, or are we just content to be a painting on a canvas? Jesus still walks on the earth, but now through his church. If we picture our lives as a painting on a canvas, are we allowing God to place us as the paintbrush on the right spot at the right time on the canvas of our lives as witnesses and giving testimony for him? Or are we painting ourselves on the canvas without his mercy, mercy that cleans us up who are coated up with sin? We can even ask Are we cooperating with the Lord in the trials of life? Or are we an obstacle and not allowing the explosion of the rays of blood and water to flow out into a world that does not see or acknowledge Jesus because they do not see, smell, or touch him in us? As we just heard in John's Gospel, Thomas missed out on Jesus' first visit to the disciples on the evening of the resurrection. Despite the apostles' testimony, he remained skeptical. His doubt perhaps came because he had just lost his good friend Jesus, and also maybe isolation from his friends. Thomas was not hostile to the truth, but he desired to see and touch the Lord's wounds to believe in a resurrection. As we can see of Caravaggio's painting of the Dowling Thomas, Jesus guides Thomas to reach into his side and into his wounds and thus believe now in the resurrection. 
This was an act of mercy by our Lord. As we continue to contemplate the scene, Thomas encountered Jesus' most beloved and beautiful sacred heart in all forms, physical and spiritual, and received mercy from the divine artist of our lives. Despite Thomas's inward struggle, Christ led him to understand that mercy is an open door to walk through to a new future. Divine mercy remade Thomas so much that he no longer feared death, no longer was worried about giving testimony, as we see as he traveled to India to witness to the faith. Thomas believed by his senses and not by the testimony of others. However, Thomas, who was the last apostle to believe, is the first one to fully confess, confess in our Savior's divinity. Oh, how much our Lord desires the world today to be healed and respond to his mercy and love. Our Lord tells the saint of divine mercy, St. Faustina, if they do not believe in my words of mercy, tell them to believe in my wounds. How does the world see Jesus' wounds? In us right now. The rays of light need to pass through us and brush into the interior life of others who may not believe, see, or touch Jesus and his divine mercy. What does divine mercy look to us now in this world? How does it look in a hidden and seemingly ordinary way? Well, one way is through St. Faustina. As I was looking through her diary last week, I came across one little excerpt where a certain sister came up to her and asked for her prayers, telling Faustina that she could no longer accept things in her life as they were. So Faustina started a novena to divine mercy. In time, the grace that the sister was asking for came to her. But at that point, she no longer wanted it. But Faustina reminded her that we ought not to force the Lord God to give us what we want, but we need to submit to His will. Mercy is found in prayer and instructing the confused. What can divine mercy look like in an extraordinary way on an exhibit into the world? Let's think about the Pope of Divine Mercy, St. John Paul II, who 40 years ago next month was, was shot at. He survived his severe wounds, but then he asked us, the church, to pray for his shooter, Mehad Ali Akwa, whom he had forgiven. John Paul continued to visit him in his stark, isolated prison cell, spending time with him praying and talking to him. The Pope later asked for a pardon, which was granted, and then Aqua actually had to go back to Turkey to serve another crime, a sentence for another crime. But while in jail, he converted to Christianity. Mercy also visits those in prison. Again, God is the true artist of our lives, but he wants our involvement to work with his brushstrokes and not our own. There are many stories of God's unfolding plan of merciful, of mercy. A visit to a prison, praying for someone, or perhaps a witness to a different people in a foreign land. Now you may ask yourself, how do these people extend divine mercy to others? And how can we? And the answer, at least for me, is the Holy Spirit. He comes fully at Pentecost, at the start of something new. And as we recall in the first reading we just heard today, at that time the church was united. People are moved to do acts of mercy, touched by merciful love. The community gave all their possessions to the church, so all the needs of everyone were taken care of. The Holy Spirit moved them. He is the one who gave them the courage to share their testimony and their possessions about Christ to others. Recalling the gospel he heard, when Jesus breathes the Spirit on the ten in the upper room, they are exceedingly joyful, able to forgive sins, and give witness to the Lord, witness about the Lord to Thomas. The Holy Spirit received that baptism and strengthen in confirmation will give you the words and the courage to forgive someone who has robbed you of your peace. To help you pray 
in calmness to do the Father's will on earth as it is in heaven and not your own. And to believe and to speak up for Jesus so that no one can no longer say that they do not see him or his mercy. The Spirit wants to reconfigure, imprint, and paint Jesus into your hearts. The Spirit will give you the words to say at the right moment when the people see your wounds that were healed by Jesus, who restores you through confession, which we can imagine as we look at the white rays coming out of the divine mercy image. Others out there, those who may persecute the church or do not believe in the real presence, let them see you practicing your mercy to those around you, in work, with the poor, or even in your family, so they cannot resist God's mercy that endures forever. After confession, the gift that was given to us through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are now ready to see, receive Jesus in his glorified body. Another gift in the Eucharist. And again, now think of the red rays that come out of the image of divine mercy. And let the sweet aroma of Jesus' love permeate out of your wounds. Let the Spirit in where you need to cultivate a deeper relationship with him. For example, you can pray for his seven gifts. Perhaps do a novena for Pentecost. Or even invite him to graft himself on your hearts in prayer, adoration, or reading scripture. He will bring you to you those in need to see and touch Jesus so that others may believe that Jesus is the Son of God through your testimony. Do not let your spiritual or physical life with the Lord hang in a museum. But reveal Him through you as you take the first step to the world, even as it tries sometimes to keep the doors of the upper room closed. The mystical body of Christ, us, in the power of the Holy Spirit, can walk out of paintings and through locked doors to bring the Lord's peace to those burdened and isolated. If we believe that we receive mercy, we should give out mercy without expecting anything in return. Let your actual physical acts of charity have the imprint of the divine artist. Jesus, I trust in you.